Hi guys, it's just a solo vlog today. I'm doing a little walk out on Great Wakering, but we're actually gonna be walking directly through the middle of some active Ministry of Defence firing ranges. Now, don't worry, we are gonna be sticking to the public rights of way, but if we stray from the paths, it is strictly illegal to be on the Ministry of Defence land. It's not like private land in general where trespass is not a criminal fence. In this case, you can actually, you know, you could get fined, you can get arrested, you could even get imprisoned, who knows? So hopefully that doesn't happen to us. But it's a really historic area, Fairness Island and Great Wakering, the ranges there date back to the Victorian era, possibly even earlier than that and they're still used today. They had a huge, huge part to play in the Cold War with the development of the atomic and hydrogen bomb that Britain wielded. But today we're gonna to be walking around Great Wakering. We're gonna be going past some of the sites there, taking in the sites and the nature. So a few weeks ago, I actually sent an email in to the Ministry of Defense, Shubri Ness, to actually just double check that everything that we're doing today is going to be legitimate and i've got the email here now actually they were very helpful it took us a bit of a while to get this reply it says here um you know it's fine to walk the path as long as the flags are down but it also says we cannot comment on any obstructions that may exist maybe they've just chucked a big old block or a big old gate in the way to stop people from doing it anyway who knows i wanted to ask is photography allowed from the public rights of way um, now some of the buildings and stuff are protected under the official secrets act so we don't want to be giving away anything too detailed that might compromise national security of course that's not something that anyone really wants to be doing but they do say here we cannot regulate the activities that take part on the public rights of way sounds to me like basically it's public land you can do whatever you want there but they do say we would advise that you do not photograph any mod assets so i think that's fair you know i don't want anyone getting too much detailed footage of any of their operations there yeah oh thanks for the information all right cheers bye so there we go, it sounds like we're all the go guys. Um, footpaths are open, the flags aren't flying, which um, if you don't know those flags, they stay up when the actual firing ranges are in operation. So I've printed off the maps of the routes we're gonna be taking because you do really, really need to stick to the footpaths. We're gonna be parking up at Cupid's Corner here. Um, the red flags, which are marked on the map, they're not flying at the moment. So we're gonna be going down footpath 26, along 28, back round under Haven Gore Bridge and um, I think we're then going to come off the MOD land over to a farm there, come back down from the farm, back to the car. We're going to go past some interesting sites like Q Battery here. We're going to have the Wakering Stairs going out into the Broomway, which is said to be England's most dangerous footpath because it actually goes unmarked out onto the marshes and many, many people have died on this path over hundreds of years. We've got also another little information booklet here telling you all about public access around the MOD site. Whilst driving to the site perimeter, we were suddenly overtaken by a speeding, mysterious, blacked out car. Its windows and number plates appeared to be darkened past legal allowance. Hopefully, it wasn't the men in black. We first followed the footpath along the back of some houses where we first entered the MOD site. There's the old bylaws which um, protect the Ministry of Defence lands. That covers the whole Shubriness area and these date back 
to some of the firing ranges from around the late 19th century when the Victorian firing ranges over at Gunners Park, which are now part of a nature reserve, were first operating. We then took the footpath through a shrub bed area crossing railways that had served the site for transportation. It actually is a continuation of the C to C line, but continues into MOD Shoebury Ness. Until recently, many abandoned train and underground carriages were left along these railways, kept in storage after retirement and supposedly used for target practice. MOD Shoebury Ness was first established 170 years ago in 1849 at the old ranges, now Gunners Park, open to the public. The Wagering and Foulness Island ranges formed the new range, emerging towards the turn of the 20th century where it continues operation today under Defence Company of Connecticut. Most light weapon and missile technology used in the world wars passed through these ranges. Eventually we reached the sea wall. It provided stunning views of a very isolated extremity of the Thames estuary. Brent geese come to roost here on the marshes after migrating from across the world before moving to Lee. The Ministry of Defence occupation of the area has actually led to the preservation of its natural environment. Then things became a little more dramatic. We found several circular depressions in the mud which appeared to be bomb craters. There weren't any modern ranges on this part of the site, so perhaps these remained from tests done here as much as a century ago. We then reached a test complex consisting of a large block blast wall, although nothing too much of interest appeared to be going on here. We decided to blur out this close up just to be on the safe side. Our next stop was Wakering Stairs, where the road and sea wall meets the Broomway, Britain's most dangerous road. Here, a lookout tower labelled X1 stands overlooking the estuary. It was built in the 1950s or 60s, judging Smell by its appearance. Smell the uranium. Smell the uranium. <laughs> Whilst no known nuclear explosions took place at the MOD Shoebury Ness Ranges, radiological material was handled during the development of Britain's nuclear weapons. However, that occurred far from here, in the Shelford region of Foulness Island. Wakering Stairs marks the start of the Broomway, Britain's most dangerous path. It is named so because its path is only marked by stakes or broom handles stuck into the mud. Before Havengore Bridge was built, it was the only foot access onto Foulness Island. It is still the only public right of way enabling free access to the island, 
but its route is otherwise unmarked and highly disorientating. The path is recorded as early as 1419, but it's likely older and it runs for six miles. The Foulness Burial Register records 66 bodies recovered from the sands since 1600, likely claiming the lives of over 100 individuals. The area where Wakering Stairs first meets the mud is ominously entitled The Black Grounds. We next came across some enormous concrete blocks, clearly very old. Without straying closer, it was hard to assess them further, but it looked that they were at least many decades old. World War II bunkers, I reckon. Do you think? Nah, that's not a bunker, though. I reckon they're just like blast walls. See, I wonder, is that like a World War II targets and bits? Look, there's the old pillbox down the end. In World War II, a mock Atlantic wall was built from concrete to simulate Hitler's coastal defences of northern France in training for D-Day. These could have been elements of that, although they are unlisted. In the distance, a two-storey pillbox was visible, which was once used for target practice, evident by the two massive shell holes in its side. We then approached Haven Gore Point and the ominous Q battery, still used to this day, appeared. Because it's still used, I have to be careful, so I decided to blow it out. But what we found next is truly incredible. The footpath led directly across the backstop of Battery Q. Lying here was a series of huge metal plates, several inches thick, clearly shot through with holes made by large caliber ammunition. That's crazy. We were walking directly across where firing takes place. What kind of weapon could fire through steel this thick? Then we saw it. An auto cannon sat mounted in the battery on a pedestal mount. It looks something like this. The Mauser BK-27, which is known to be in use by Kinetic U. Then we looked out to sea, and there in the mud was something even more amazing. Shrapnel was strewn throughout the mud. It was everywhere. Metal shards littered the horizon. Targets must have been placed out here 
or along the wall, and the shrapnel flying from targets became embedded in the mud behind and it had accumulated into a mass of rusted fragments. After this incredible sight, we set to reach the end of the footpath. We approach Haven Gore Bridge, which connects the rest of the ranges of Foulness Island to Great Wakering. Here are the numerous military checkpoints which regulate its access. We had now made it out of the MOD land without being arrested or blown to smithereens. We were greeted with some bleak views across Rushley Island and Wakering Creek after stopping for a drink. Next we found ourselves in Monsell Farm, where we found our only evidence of radioactivity. A sign on the barn door containing a radioactive source, however this is probably for the sterilisation of food. We returned to Great Wakering Village by walking around the Landwick MOD security checkpoint and passing the historic Landwick cottages. These actually housed Italian prisoners of war in World War II. Finally, we headed back to where we had parked the car down at Cupid's Corner following the winding path between garden fences and the Ministry of Defence perimeter.
Right guys, that's going to conclude our walk around the great wakering footpaths of MOD Tubery Ness. We stuck to the footpaths, we did it all by the book, we had a good look around, but we did see some very unusual sights from the military rangers that we didn't expect, such as the huge, huge bullet holes in the massive, thick pieces of metal, which I can only imagine are designed to um, be about the thickness of tank armour. That was incredible, and all the shrapnel out on the mud there absolutely incredible i can't believe that we walked across the backstop of a firing range as part of the footpath it's a really really nice footpath actually a very natural place surprisingly um, despite its military presence we've heard gunshots in the distance which probably just the farmer um, trying to use that as a decoy to stop pest landing on his crops and things we saw like this black tap vehicle following us down to a road leading up to the place and that was a bit of a creepy one um, but the footpath itself seemed pretty pleasant seemed to be um, signposted quite well you know we had a look around we were respectful of the place um, and yeah it was good to see a little bit of history and an area that you don't usually um, see or expect to be able to see. Without further ado guys, remember to subscribe to Beyond the Point for more hidden history in Essex and the surrounding counties and I'll see you later.